Geeks and Gamers, Noelle here, and we're going to continue this week with our review of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition classes. This week, the Bard. These are the puckish musicians and lore masters who use their cunning and spells to boost their allies and befuddle their foes. But before we get into it, please allow me to show you how you can support the Geeks and Gamers tabletop channel. Please consider supporting us on our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video particularly helpful, please consider leaving a tip using the super thanks feature located next to the like buttons at the bottom of the video. Now, before we get into the specifics of the Bard class, I do want to let you know we are looking at the class out of the remastered player core, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, the Bard class was not among one of the heavily changed classes from the 2019 rules to the remaster. In fact, the entry is pretty much a word-for-word uh, -word copy from 2019 to remaster with the addition of the warrior muse that was originally in the advanced player's handbook um, added in to the player core now in the remaster. Now the bard class is a support class. Primarily you are going to be casting spells that allow for more advantageous outcomes for other players. This is in combat, social situations, and exploration. So there'll be no headlong running into combat with this class. And you can have spells that will do damage or have negative effects for enemies. Um, but, and you do carry weapons, but you're not going to do um, as much damage as a pure martial class or a pure caster class like, say, a wizard or even a witch. As always, we are starting on the class opening page here. And if you've watched my other class videos, this should start to look familiar. Up top in the now green box in the remaster, it's going to tell you two very important things. And that is your key attribute, which for this class is charisma. You are going to be a charisma caster as a bard. Now in the remaster, you have these six original options for ancestries. And that is your dwarf, elf, human, gnome, goblin and halfling there is still the option for what they now call mixed ancestry which is your half elves and half orcs but there are two additional options which is for leshy which are uh, sentient like plant beings and full orc if you're going to be choosing a class gnomes and goblins start with a named attribute boost for their charisma and might be good choices however all classes, with the exception of the human and full orcs, do get a free attribute boost that you can assign. And humans and full orcs have two free assignable attribute boosts and no attribute flaw. So your choices are pretty wide open for Bard. There's not really a big, big downside depending on which ancestry you choose for this class. You can go wild, make something crazy. Second is your hit points, which is going to be 8 plus your constitution modifier. Constitution probably isn't going to be super high on your list for the class. Uh, 8 plus your constitution modifier isn't terrible, but you're definitely, definitely going to be a lot squishier than, say, a barbarian or a fighter class. Now, on to the sidebar are your initial proficiencies. So you're going to start as an expert in perception. Uh, you are going to have training in your fortitude and reflex saving th throws and expert in your will saving throws. So you're going to be very good at defending against, say, mental uh, effects and attacks. And that stands to reason with the bard class who tends to be cunning and persuasive and using their knowledge to manipulate situations. You're trained in occultism, performance skills, and a number of skills equal to 4 plus your intelligence modifier. So skills will be very advantageous for this class. Having a higher intelligence in their skills will be beneficial, and it's 
another um, attribute you're going to look at prioritizing for the class. They're trained in simple weapons, martial weapons, and unarmed attacks. This is the first minor change we really see from the 2019 four rule set. Uh, it used to have a list of weapons um, like rapier, sap, crossbow, and some others um, under martial weapons, and now it just says martial weapons. Not a big change, but a change. And you are trained in light armor and unarmored. Then we have that you are trained in the spell attack modifier. And this is the second change uh, from the 2019 core rules. It used to say you were trained in the occult spell proficiency. Um, you still cast out of the occult tradition, one of the four traditions finder. Um, and there's really no additional difference other than the, the wording here. You're still going to have pretty much the same repertoire of spells to, to pull from initially. It's, a, it's just a change in language from the 2019 core rulebooks and the remaster. So here we see under your class features the bard spell casting header, and that just lets you know you um, use your esoteric knowledge to cast your spells and that you are spell casting from the occult tradition, as we mentioned from the opening page for the class. And these spells go into your repertoire, which is your pool of spells that you're going to know as a bard. And you're going to begin choosing from the common occult spells on page 309. And as you can see here in the bard spells per day table, at level one, you'll start with five cantrips and two first level spell slots. And as you gain levels, you will gain spell slots and spell ranks. Now your repertoire is different than say your focus spells and also uh, different than some composition cantrips that you get as a bard and we will talk about them in just a bit. Now spells and cantrips that are part of your repertoire can be swapped out. Every time you gain a level you will learn new spells and you will also have the ability to replace old spells you know with different ones of the same rank. Composition spells are not the same. You cannot swap them in and out of your repertoire. These are special unique spells to bards. It says you can infuse your performances with magic to create unique effects called compositions. These will generally take your performance skill when casting them and they're usually going to cost one focus point. They're going to draw off of your focus spell point pool when using them. Composition scripts are also unique to bards. However, they're not going to use the focus points, you're going to be able to cast them whenever you like. Now, unlike spells in your repertoire, you cannot swap out the composition spells and trips. So the main class feature for bards is muses. Muses are basically the different sub options for bard that you can play. The bard has to be inspired by something. That's going to be your muse. Now, this is normally um a person, a creature, or a deity, but it can be something more abstract. The first option for bards is Enigma, and this one is a bit more abstract. Um, you are driven by basically the mysteries of the universe. Um, you could be inspired by something you cannot fully grasp, text layered with symbolism, emotional paradoxes, but it does say if you are going to choose a physical creature, um, good options would be something mysterious like an Aeon or a cold dragon, deities such as Iori or Nethys. Now, each muse gives you a muse feat and a muse spell. The muse feat for the Enigma is Bardic Lore, and where this one is really driven by knowledge and the unknown, giving you a feat that will make you more knowledgeable, is in flavor and it gives you the muse spell of sure strike and this will allow you or an ally to essentially roll two dice for your attack roll and take the better of the two outcomes making sure those blows land in battle 
The second use option is Maestro or Maestro, depending on how you say it. And essentially, this is the bard that's going to be ever aspiring to greater heights in their uh, musical or performing endeavors. Uh, good muse options would be a renowned teacher or virtuoso, choir angel, or the divine Shailen, who's essentially the patron for the arts. You're going to get the Muse Feet Lingering Composition. It's going to give you an additional focus point to your pool, allowing you to cast more of those spells before you have to recharge the focus points. And it's going to give you the Muse spell Soothe, which is going to allow yourself or allies to regain additional hit points, as well as giving them a plus two status bonus against effects. Next up, we have Polymath, and this is described as the jack of all trades bard. Uh, in among the muse options, this one is my favorite. So this bard muse can be almost anything. They're constantly vacillating between muses and different pursuits. Um, but if you were going to choose a muse, it should be something kind of eclectic, like um, a fae or uh, a deity like Desna or Calistria. Now, they have my favorite options for the Muse feat, the Muse spell. So you get as a feat versatile performance. And what this allows you to do is use your ranks in performance um, to uh, qualify you to use uh, skills in deception, diplomacy, and intimidation. So you can use your performance skill rather than those um, which allows for some great options role-playing wise in a whole bunch of social situations you can perform rather than try. Performance will be intimidating for you or for diplomacy or for lying, uh, which I just feel is great. And then you get Phantasmal Minion, which is a small magic form, either invisible or sort of flowy, magic minion that can do things for you now it can't fight it doesn't cause damage but it can do other tasks like um uh, retrieve objects uh open doors or containers or unlock them among other things uh, just a really fun option for you to sort of get into some shenanigans i just like this one the best lastly we have the warrior muse option and this was originally in the advanced players handbook for the 2019 rule set but they have just made it part of the remastered player core and this option is really leaning the bard more into a martial side a support character as you can see here it says the battlefield is your stage the clang of steel your song so you would might be inspired by um, famous warriors, epic tales of battle or war songs. If you're going to choose a creature or a deity for your muse, it might be something um, like an archon or an infernal soldier or the god Gorum. Uh, and the muse feat it provides is martial performance which essentially allows you to extend certain composition cantrips whenever you make a strike in combat and in addition to that it's going to give you an option of one of two additional composition cantrips that can also be extended in this way it's also going to give you the muse spell fear which will cause your enemies to have to make a save and if they um, fail then they will have some level of the frightened condition okay so we've discussed the various muses you can choose as a bard and now let's take a quick look at just one feat i usually look at a couple first or second level feats for a class just to give you an idea of what you might be picking early on for feats or have available for you for feats um, if you're making this class now with Bard, a lot of the feats are given to you through the muses, um, with the exception of one or two. But I wanted to take a quick look at this uh, second level feat. 
uh, called Multifarious Muse. The reason for that is as you progress through your levels as a bard, you might notice that your feet will have the prerequisite of a particular muse. As with over here with the versatile performance, you can see that you have to be a polymath muse bard in order to have it. But what if you want versatile performance and you chose Enigma Bard? Well, you can choose Multifarious Muse at second level. It's going to grant you access to another muse's feats that have its prerequisite. So if you chose Enigma at second level, you decided, I want versatile performance, you can choose Multifarious Muse and that'll allow you to take feats under the Polymath Muse also. And you can take this feat multiple times each time you have to choose a different muse but then you have the, the options from those muses opened up to you just as an ending note for the bard class this is a great class to play around with builds in uh yes you are a support class you are there to boost your allies but you are also usually there to bring a fair bit of tomfoolery and shenanigans to the play group. So be creative and have a ton of fun. Make an orc opera singer or a dwarf belly dancer. Do something crazy. It will only make things more interesting and fun for the group. That will be all for today's review of the Bard class. So what would your muse be? Would you be the jack of all trades? or the war song master? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this information useful. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the video. And consider joining us over on Gilded where you can chat with me and the rest of the Geeks and Gamers crew. You can even find a table to play at and it's all free. Just click the link in the description below. May all your games be guilt-free and fun and I will talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.